Hello, I'm Becky Safe. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to dive deep into the world of automation in Ableton Live 11. Now, I do actually cover this in my complete Ableton Live 11 course. So if you do want to master Ableton really quickly, check it out below in the description. There's over 140 videos in the course so far. I'm going to be adding some more videos in the coming weeks to do with Session View Live Performance. So that's on top of the 140 that are already on the course. So yeah, feel free to check it out and uh, yeah, I'll hopefully see you on the course. But in this video, I'll be sharing with you automation in the arrangement view and in the clip view. So there's two ways to do it in Ableton. And if you don't know what automation is, it's where Ableton will adjust the parameters of either an instrument, of effects or of your channel settings. Instruments, effects, all your channel settings over time. All right, let's get into it. So here I have an audio sample. This is what the sample sounds like. So you know what it is. So you know what we're working with. And to access automation, you press the A key and this will appear. You can see it's slightly changed and there's a drop down menu that's appeared on the channel here. And we have an automation arm button that's appeared in blue. If you're struggling to get to this particular point, it's probably because you have this little keyboard highlighted at the top here, which is your typing keyboard used as a performance controller. If you didn't have a actual keyboard, you would press this at the top here. So if you have that selected and then you press the A key, now you'll notice that it's not opening the automation. And that's because we're using the typing keyboard as a, as a performance keyboard. I wish they named them different. But yeah, this is a keyboard. And this is the keyboard. So yeah, just disable the keyboard, this keyboard, and then press the A key. And now you have your automation. So this drop down menu on the track here, let's click on the drop down menu and you can see that we can access the mixer and we have track volume. We have all the other settings as well. We have the sends and returns, but at the moment it's on track volume. And you can see now that we have this pink line that's appeared across our track. If you hover over it, you can see that it says zero DB and that's in relation to our track volume. And you can see here that the track volume is at zero DB. Now we can start to automate this manually using the mouse. If you click on this line, you'll be adding what we call breakpoints. And now you can drag these breakpoints, these little dots, so that you start to automate the volume. And now if we play it. You can see that it's automatically adjusting the volume over time. And if you come over to the right here, you can see that there's a little red dot on the volume. And if you watch the volume slider, you'll notice it dips up and down as the automation progresses. So now we've automated the volume on the channel, let's do another parameter. So let's do panning, which is left to right. And the beauty about Ableton Live 11 is that you have what we call automation lanes. So if you come over to the plus button on the channel here and press it, you'll see that the track volume has now shifted down. We can still see that we have automation on the track volume, but now what we can do is we can automate another parameter, which will be on this level. So if we go to mixer, and then we go to track panning. We have a completely new line that says C when we hover over it. And C means center, so central image in panning. And if we click to add our breakpoints and then drag them up and down, and you'll see over on the padding settings now that we have a little red dot, which means that this is automated. So if we press play, We're having automation not only in the track volume up and down, but we're also having it left and right on the panning. And if you wanted to add another automation lane, you just carry on by pressing the plus button. If you wanted to delete that automation lane, you just minus it here. It won't delete the automation, but it will just delete it from view. If you wanted to collapse your automation lanes, you press the triangle and now you just have one 
in view, but it doesn't delete the automation. And you can see that with the little red dots here. And also on the drop down menu, you can see that we have little red dots next to the parameters that we've automated. Now, if that's all you wanted to do and you didn't want any of the other parameters to be on show, you can just click on show automated parameters only. And now in the drop down menu, you just have the things that you've automated. Now, if you wanted to curve your automation on a Mac, it's option on a PC, it's alt. If you press alt and hover over the line, you can see that this curve appears and then you can drag it and you can actually start to curve your automation. <gasps> Now you can also insert shapes of automation. So if you select over a certain area, right click and in the drop down menu, you have insert shapes. So we could have a little downward ramp and then like the same with editing in the arrangement view. If you select over your automation and you press control or command and D, you can duplicate that automation so that it's just quicker for you to get that automation laid down. You can also do selecting over it and control or command and C, and then you can go to another area, say for example at the beginning, control or command and V, and then you've just copied and pasted that automation. So control, command and D to duplicate, control, command and C to copy, control or command and V to paste. If you decided that you don't like the automation that you've done, you could just select over it and you can just press backspace and it will delete. You can also double click on a breakpoint and it will then flatten the line. If you double click on all the breakpoints, it goes back to a dotted line, which shows that there's no automation on the track. So I've just inserted loads of shapes here. And if you select over the automation, and if you hover over this window now, you'll see that in the corners, we have little squares. And this is actually to skew your automation. So if I drag on one of the top ones, you'll see that we're skewing on a slope the automation. If I do it on one of the bottom squares, we're skewing up on the automation. If I do it on the right side, it squeezes the automation together. And if I do it obviously on the left side, it's gonna squeeze it over to the right. And then the top middle, is going to skew it down and the bottom is going to squash it up. If you just wanted to manually move your automation in a block, say you wanted to move it left or right or up and down, you just hover over it, it will change colors slightly. Don't click on the automation line and you can then start to drag it up and down. If you hold down on shift, it will start to do it a lot more precisely. So you can see here that it's moving, I'm, I'm aggressively moving this mouse and it's moving a lot more slowly. And if you press Alt or Option, it's going to disable the grid and then you can get even more precise there with the movement of your automation. Another way to do automation is to record it in. It's actually my preferred way of doing it because it just makes it more human and I enjoy the process of doing that. I've got a delay on the track here and I'm going to record the dry wet. At the moment in the drop down menu, it says mixer and speaker on. And actually another way to get your parameters to show in that drop down menu, instead of cycling through everything. If you just come down to the plugin or the effect or the instrument, you just press on the parameter and now you'll see that the delay dry wet has appeared in the window. So it's a quick way of accessing the parameter that you want to automate. Now I'm going to bring this down to zero so you can see that this line is moving down and just make sure that you don't have the record on because we're not recording audio or MIDI or anything into the track. We're just recording the automation. So make sure that's turned off. And now we're going to press record at the top. We're going to manually move this dry wet and it will record the automation into the track. Record. <laughs> And you can see there that we've recorded the automation. There's lots of little breakpoints that have appeared and it's a more manual way of doing it. Now you can do this by mapping to controllers. So you don't actually have to use your mouse. You could use a controller or your keyboard. I do go into that in my complete Ableton Live 11 course. So if you want to learn about mapping, I go over everything you need to know to master Ableton Live 11 quickly. That's what you want, quickly link below. All right. So these breakpoints have been recorded in. It's a little bit messy, so you can select over it, right click. And if you simplify envelope, you'll now see that it's a lot more smoother. You can double click on the breakpoints and you can use the curve. So you're getting a much smoother line. <laughs> 
And you'll see here on the delay that we have a little red dot on the dry wet. We also have red dots everywhere to say that this is being automated. All right, so that's the arrangement view automation. If you double click on the clip, we're now into the clip view and the automation is pretty similar in the way that it's carried out. So this is where you would do your automation and you probably would do automation like this if you were just gonna be using the session view, especially if you're doing live performance because you won't be accessing the arrangement view if you're using the session view and a controller in live performance. So this is where you would do your automation. Now, instead of pressing the A key in this window, you come over to your envelopes and you'll have the drop down menus here. So this is where you can start to automate your dry wet. <laughs> And this is on top of the automation that we've done here. So this is your track automation and this is your clip automation. So whatever you do within the clip automation will be in conjunction with the track automation. You also have clip envelopes here so you can transpose, so change the pitch over time. <laughs> So you do actually have access to other parameters in the clip envelopes that you wouldn't normally have access to in the arrangement view. Some of them being actually the warp modes. So if we come onto warp and texture, we now have grain size and flux. If we drag on the grain size, so remember when you touch a parameter, it's going to come in the drop-down menu, come back over to our envelopes, you can see it says clip, and grain size and we also have flux as well so now we can automate the parameters of our warp modes and again you can draw that in so you're starting to get some really cool textures and sounds here again you can curve this using the curve tool you can insert shapes you can also skew and you can hover over it, just don't touch the lines and you can drag it up and down and left and right. So very similar to the arrangement view automation. Now at the moment, this is on what we call linked loop. If we disable the linked loop, you'll see that the clip, the actual information in the audio file disappears. And what this is basically doing now is it's showing you the automation within a certain given amount of time. Rather than assigning it to the actual audio file itself, you're now automating from bar one up to around two with this automation here. And it actually goes all the way up to the end of five bars. You can drag the loop markers so that it comes down into bar one to the start of bar two. And now what it's gonna do is it's going to cycle through this automation over the time, so bar one to bar two, bar one to bar two in the arrangement view. And it will cycle that round and round and round and it's not actually assigning it to the audio file. It's just looping it round and round. So let's play it. So we're automating the grain size here every bar and you can select over this and you can make it smaller and then you can select over it again and press Control or Command and D and duplicate that. So now we have a little bit more automation going on every bar. So we've done automation in the arrangement view, we've done automation in the clip view and finally I want to show you that you can actually automate an instrument. So here's a MIDI track. And on the MIDI track, we have a wavetable instrument. And if you press the A key and the drop down menu, you can see that the wavetable has appeared. And now we have access to all of the parameters that we can automate. But to quickly access them, just click on the parameter and it's going to appear in the drop down menu. And then you can start to draw in your automation. And you can see here on the instrument that the frequency now has a little red dot and we're automating the frequency. double click on the clip and you do have your envelopes in here again so you can start to automate within the clip as well and you also have the access to the linked loop and unlinked loop. And that is automation in Ableton Live 11. I'm just getting over being ill so I'm hoping that that video was good and if you liked it please give it a like please. This was actually one of the harder videos for me to make as my voice is literally caving in. <coughs> so I'd really appreciate it if you just gave it a like.
<laughs> if you enjoy my videos and my content, please subscribe to the channel. You'll be notified when I post live every single time I do. And check out all the links below to the Discord, to the Twitch channel, to the courses, and all of the other things that you might want to know about are below in the description. I'm Becky Safe. Thank you for watching this video. I will see you for another one. Bye. <laughs>